Uh, we're going to talk about grilled, a grilled corn salad and doing some grilled salmon also. So we, uh, we're using a hardwood charcoal today on the grill here. Uh, a little difficulty this morning or this afternoon here with the wind and everything getting lit. So I think we're up and running. Uh, who likes to grill? Everybody here? It's one of my favorite uh, cooking methods is grilling. Uh, it's so versatile, you can do anything on it, and it's, it's just so, so much fun. It's the heat, it's great, I love it. Uh, so we're gonna start here. Nope, lost you. All right, well we're gonna start off here, we're gonna grill off some radicchio romaine. That's also gonna be incorporated in the corn salad that we're gonna make. Uh, grilling the radicchio and the romaine gives it a nice charred flavor. You get a nice bitterness from the, ro uh, the radicchio. Uh, radicchio is a uh, very bitter green. It's typically mixed in a lot of Italian and um, Mediterranean dishes uh, to help cut through some of the sweetness they use in a lot of the uh, items. Uh, we're also going to take some of the corn and grill it whole. Just add a little oil, salt, pepper. Sorry. And you'll want to rotate it quite often, that way you don't get too much of a char throughout the corn. Unless you like that charred flavor, then go for it. It's, uh, it's a, I like that, it's great and tasty. Uh, we also have some portobello mushrooms inside the corn. Yes? Can you ask about the corn? Uh, some people do it in the husk, or some people blow it in foil. Is there an advantage to doing it straight up in the road? If you do it in the husk or in foil, uh, it prevents it from getting the color that you would get when you grill it like I am doing right now. Um, it is a way of also helping cook the corn a little faster. That way, uh, for instance, if you don't like that char, you cook the corn in the husk, but you also get that smoke flavor from the grill. So uh, that is a majority of why people do do it in the foil. Um, you get that nice caramelization. You hear the popping like you would popcorn out of a microwave. Um, that's how you kind of know it's done, too, when you hear that nice popping kernel sound, too. It's, uh, so you see you get, like, nice char like that. Same thing with the radicchio you do. Uh, I like it. Not a lot of people like radicchio because uh, of that bitterness. Um, but I'm one of those kind of, I like that kind of flavor. So next we're going to talk about some salmon. Uh, here we have some smoked, uh, so smoked grilled salmon that we did in uh, inside. Uh, so we just uh, took the salmon, smoked it, uh, with some wood chips first and what we did is we lightly grilled it uh, give it some nice uh, slow cooking that way it's not so dry and, and keeps some nice moisture inside of it um, you guys like salmon salmon is a very popular fish uh, amongst a lot of people um, personally it's not my fish I like a lot of white fish salmon is a very oily fish a lot of people you know the omega fatty acids and all that is what a lot of people look for when they go for fish uh, but, you know, I think everyone's got a great, uh, everyone has flavor profiles. They like things a lot differently. So, you know, everyone's got, I like smoked salmon. I know it's weird. That's the only salmon I actually eat is smoked salmon. Smoked salmon and bagels. It's weird. My wife thinks it's crazy because I don't eat regular salmon or like fresh salmon. I don't know. But uh, any other questions while, from what I've just gone over? Any grilling questions, basic grilling questions? All right, next I'm gonna show you guys a technique of how to clean the corn after you've grilled it. Um, a lot of people have difficulties grilling or cleaning corn because when you clean it, the corn just goes everywhere. So, in order to prevent that, what you can do uh, is you actually take, for instance, I have a bowl and a little bit smaller bowl, place it inside of the other one, and you actually take the corn, put it on top of the bowl. Actually, my bowl's too big, unfortunately. I didn't really plus myself out properly here. But you take the corn and you just go down and it all collects inside the inner bowl. Uh, a lot of people, you'll see some people cleaning it this way. I don't like that because you might lose a finger. Um, so that is one of my techniques of always of cleaning corn after you've grilled it when you leave it whole. Now, they do make what are called grilling pans, which are like a perforated saute pan. 
I think those are really fun to have. They're really convenient, especially for a home cook. So you can always just buy some clean shucked corn off the cob and use one of those kind of perforated pans over your grill top. Uh, you can do that same thing with like cherry tomatoes if you like roasted tomatoes and things like that on a grill. It's a great way of uh, implementing other uh, items on a grill. Yes. Oh, I, you, <laughs> so the radicchio and romaine I will be chopping up and we'll be adding into the corn salad. Our corn salad has mushrooms, cilantro, mint, roasted peppers, and it's just a really nice light, nice, light, fresh salad with a little bit of lemon vinaigrette, olive oil. I mean, it's a great summer dish. Obviously, today is a great spring day, so it works out great. Um, let's see. Any other questions anybody have? Yes. Uh, you always want to start on a high heat and then gradually go to a slower heat because you want that char that you get on a grill. The best way to do that is you have, when, if you have a large, decent sized grill where you have different burners on it, keep one side a little lower than the other. That way you start on the one side of the grill and then you gradually bring things to your uh, less, the least, least amount of heat. That way you get that slower cooking style. But yeah, you always want to start high heat and then gradually bring it down. That way you can have the nice, you know, smoky flavor and all that you would off a grill. So let's see here. Um, let's see. So the salmon that we're doing is actually going to be a barbecue glazed salmon. Um, and when you do barbecue salmon, or any kind of barbecue, uh, and you grill it, rather than doing a slow cook method, uh, you know, as a traditional barbecue, you always want to pre-mark your items and get them started cooking before you add any sauce to it. Because if you do, it will stick, it'll make a mess on your grill, and unfortunately, whatever you're grilling will start to fall apart and just unfortunately will not be pretty. <laughs> It'll be tasty, but it won't look very nice, unfortunately. But, but you always wanna just do a nice light glaze on each side, flip it, let it cook, and let it caramelize on the grill and let the, let the heat kinda get the sugars and the barbecue sauce and let it, let it brown up. It's nice to have this cool weather after all this heat we've had. Now it feels like spring other than summer. And uh, also when I did the salad, I took some lemons and I charred them on the grill. Doing that also a very nice flavor uh, than just straight lemon juice. So you'll just take lemons, you'll have them, you put them on the grill, get a nice, nice char on them, and squeeze all the juice out of it. It has a smoky lemon flavor. Really nice. Do a lot of you like to eat the skin on fish? Yes? Okay, good. Because crispy skin is always the best tasting skin when you have seafood. Personally, if you don't have crispy skin, there's no point in having a nice piece of fish with skin on it. You always want to... It's embarrassing sometimes when you go to restaurants and you see a nice piece of fish and it's just a soggy skin on top. Uh, very unpleasant. Very unpleasant. But that's always a good thing about grills too. When you get it nice and hot, you always get that nice crispiness on the outside.
just to see if I can do you a demonstration on this corn cutting method I have for you guys. So all you do is you take it, always want to use the flat side down, that way you don't have wobbly and you don't lose a finger. All you do is just go straight down. Corn falls right in the bowl. Remove it and you have your shucked corn. Very nice and easy. So, in a few minutes, I'll start plating some up for you guys and we'll have a sample for everybody to try. And uh, somebody will be passing around a recipe as well for what we've uh, presented for you today. Yes. Yeah, okay, so today I used actual wood charcoal. Um, wood charcoal is the most difficult to really get started just because it's still uh, a nice chunk of wood. Um, what uh, unfortunately I wasn't really prepared for today, but I should have soaked this up a little bit with some lighter fluid for about an hour. Uh, because it's harder to light than your average charcoal nuggets that you would buy like Kingsford. Um, this takes a little bit longer to get started. Uh, but what's nice about this is you get a better flavor. It gives you more of a smoke flavor too. And the heat is a lot higher that comes off of this. Um, wood burn, the, the wood charcoal holds a higher heat than you would with charcoal nuggets. You use more charcoal nuggets than you would this, if that makes sense. I personally like this just because you get that good flavor from it. Um, if you don't, you can always buy, you know, smoking chips and kind of toss those throughout your, um, your coals to get your food to give you a nice, nice smoky flavor if you'd like. Uh, I like doing that and a lot of times I like to do is toss some herbs inside the fire and like rosemary or, or you know, just to, and it gives you that nice aromatic for it. 